I'm Al Bubba Baker from Avon, Ohio, owner of the D-Bone Baby Back Rib Steaks. I'm seeking $300,000 in exchange for 15% equity in my company. And this is my lovely daughter, Brittany. She's going to make you sharks, ribs, in a microwave in two minutes. Now, I played a little football in the NFL for 13 years. That was my job. Barbecue is my passion. Sadly, I married a woman that doesn't like ribs because they're too messy. So I vowed to find a way for my wife to be able to enjoy ribs. But how do you make ribs less messy? You take the bones out. <laughs> After 20 years, I found the perfect method, and the D-bone baby back rib steaks were born. We are the only people that have removed the bones from an actual slab of rib, leaving the meat intact so that everyone can enjoy ribs with a knife and fork. Our D-bone baby back rib steak is not pieces of meat formed in the shape of a rib. You know what I mean? <laughs> you tell, Bubba. Boneless meats are the way of the future, and the future is now. Make no bones about it, sharks. It's time for some ribs. <laughs> yeah. It's always time All for right. ribs. Bubba, bless me with the Bubba baby back. <laughs> Bubba, who'd you play for? Well, I played for the Lions. I was a rookie of the year in 1978. I played for the then St. Louis Cardinals, and then I came back and I retired in Cleveland in 1990. That's a long career, man. Great career. This is absolutely delicious. Yeah, it's very this good. This is really, yeah. really good. Thank you, man. Thank you. So basically, I just want to be really, really clear. I buy this, I throw it in the microwave for two minutes. And it tastes like this? You got it. Mmm. Often when we go to restaurants, cowboy ribeye, bone-in ribeye, some people actually believe that the bone just tastes better. That's a great point. We cook the product with the bone in it, and when the product is fully cooked, then we remove the bones, then we quick chill it, and then it's packed right away. Is there anything proprietary about how you're removing the bone or you're genetically altering cows so they grow up with no well, Actually, it's pigs. <laughs> Kevin, it's, it's, it's hogs. OK, so why couldn't I just do the same thing? Well, um, do you mind? I, I'm not running, guys. It's, it's not that much Don't run through the tough questions. OK, I'm not going to run through many questions. <laughs> Literally run. Right here, Kevin, is the patent for the product. And right here is the patent for the process. Wow. Can I see the process patent? Here, take them both. So through. nobody else can make boneless ribs? Let me be more specific. No one else can make a fully cooked rib with either one or more bones removed from it. Wow. And how do you get the bones out? If I tell you that, I got to kill you. Kill him. No, you don't. You got a patent. You got a patent for it, Bubba. You can tell him. Yeah, tell me. Robert, honestly, there's the patent, then there's the know-how. And what I say to people who are going to go try and reverse engineer and figure out how to do it, I say, good luck to you, because it took me 20 years to do it. I got to tell you something. In the entire history of Shark Tank, I've never seen a patent on a food product ever before. Thank you, because we worked it. Al, what are your sales, and how many locations are you in? OK, our sales are $154,000. Over what period? Over a year's period. We're selling in about 48 stores. You said it took you 20 years to develop this, and you've only been in business one year. What happened to those other 19 years? Well, at one point, I'll be honest with you, I, um, I hate to use this word, I quit. And the reason that this young lady and I are partners is we had an incident where she was in track. And uh, like most dads, I was pushing her. She said, hey, I don't want to run track. I said, you cannot quit. And she said, well, you quit on the boneless ribs. Whoa. Oh, powerful. Yeah. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't still be doing what I'm doing. OK, guys, I actually am an investor in a restaurant chain with 450 locations that sells a ton of protein. And this is their second largest selling item, ribs. Here's the big problem with your deal right now. You're asking for $2 million valuation on this thing. You're not making any money. The only value here is in the patent. This reminds me of a story that's so relevant to you. I love stories. The first season of Shark Tank, a guy stood right where you are. He had a folding neck guitar. 
He wanted to build out a guitar company. The only thing of value was the patent on the folding neck technology. You know where we are today? Where are you at? They are licensing that technology on Fender Bender guitars all around the world. He's going to be rich. Listen to what I'm saying to you. A patent on a food product? That's interesting. And the only value in the patent is to license it to one of the suppliers of protein. I want to take you to one guy okay. that supplies a, you know what, pigs hate this guy. <laughs> All around the world, pigs are walking around saying, stop the sense of slaughter because of this one guy. <laughs> so my offer is very simple. I'll give you the $300,000. It's contingent on getting one of the large meat processors in America to license the patent. But I want 49%. That's the deal. All five sharks are still in. Kevin has made an offer of $300,000 contingent on a licensing deal with a large meat processor. But he wants 49% of Al's company. That's the first time Kevin actually has a decent idea when it comes to something like this. It's the first time we've heard his stupid idea making any sense. That idea is so brilliant, I'll do the exact same deal, but I'll only take 30%. Bam, Kevin. This greedy savage, his deal is horrible. He's never done a deal like this. If you talk I've to the guy that owns- I've plenty. Al, let me clear it up for you. Yeah, OK, bro. I think you're paying a very expensive price for somebody to make a phone call for you that you could do on your own. I'm out. Bob? I would have uh, pitched you that I should bring it to some of the big box stores, some of the club channels, like BJ's, Costco. But I happen to think some of the offers on the table are better, so I'm out. And I'm, I'm kind of the same boat. I think you need to fatten up the hog some before it's ready to go. For me, the business would have to be a little bit bigger. That's why you're limited kind of to the licensing play. So for those reasons, I'm out. Okay. Al, you've got two offers. Yeah. Both licensing deals. Al, is this the path that you want to go down? Talk to the guys at Voyager and Fender all around the world. I'm the man. And I want you and I to debone this pig together. <laughs> You've got the real deal, and you got the discount license guy. Day one, you're not taking a check, and he wants to take 50% of your company. 49. I'm worth every cent of that 49%. What are you going to do? Um, Kevin, I love the fact that you have made us an offer, but I think I'm going to take Dan and ah. You picked the better man, my son. He bought the pig right in front of me. Thanks a lot. Right deal, Al. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats, guys. <laughs> he was a great salesperson. He was a great pitcher. Yes, he was yes. a great salesperson. The art of pitching.